this is nice. Well, I am here today to explain art. Now, you may think that's an impossible task, but not only am I very smart, <laughs> I'm also a member of the creative elite. <laughs> so you're in good hands. Now, before I uh, begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to show you what I do all day. You see, my job entails me wearing tight clothing. Thank you. And climbing on people. When we're kids, this is how education works. First, you digest facts. Then, you regurgitate them for the test that you know is coming, right? This is how we prove that we've learned something. Important things have a price tag on them. And if you know enough important things, people will pay you. Congratulations. <laughs> You're smart. Now for this system to work with art, we have to come up with art facts or rules, right? Um, we make things up, like and never mix the colors red and yellow. Uh, dancers always point their feet. Whatever you do, Poetry must rhyme. If you're going to paint a person, it had better look like a damn person. <laughs> Picasso, I've got my eye on you. <laughs> when you grow up, you try to evaluate all art that you see using these rules, right? When you view a new work of art, there's the struggle to get it, to figure it out, to understand it, to explain the thing away, right? And when I say get it, what I mean is that we have to explain in words what it is that we're seeing. And we do this because we know, right, that the test is coming. Somebody's going to test you. And there's one problem with the system, one little problem with viewing art this way. And that is that it's crap. Of course, we know that art doesn't actually work that way, right? But because that's the only way that we know how to engage art, we struggle on, we soldier on anyway. 
So going to a museum, seeing a play, watching a concert, God forbid, trying to look at a push performance, is a terrifying experience. <laughs> We're sitting there and we're watching it and we're going, I know that art can only have one true meaning, right? So I've got to figure out what that meaning is because I know that the test is coming. I'm going to be tested on this. Because we know art has only one meaning, either, you know, art is invalid or I'm stupid. Nobody wants to be stupid. So what we do is we create this shorthand. What we do is we tie art to commerce. And when you paint by the numbers in this way, you can evaluate everything risk-free. How good is that art? How much does it cost? <laughs> if you're really good at art, people will pay you to do it. Your audience becomes your customers. And your job is to entertain them. Now, this sad, sorry state of affairs is bad for everyone unless you're me. <laughs> because I'm a professional. And I get paid to do this. So it's awesome. Don't try it at home. I'm a professional. But this is bad for everyone else because art, real art, is supposed to challenge our preconceptions of the world. Art hurts, slaps, and defines. Art is a mirror to the world. It is the bridge between flesh and soul. Art is transformative. And at its very best, can change a human life. Here's the problem. If they get paid to do art, and I don't, it means they're good and I'm bad. And if that's the case, it means I shouldn't do anything creative. And so we are so terrified of our creativity, so tentative in our expression, that we can't even paint our living room without resorting to 10 decorating books. Why bother? You know you're going to paint it beige anyway. <laughs> Cowardly beige, weak-willed beige, I don't know. Did I pick the right shade of eggshell for my couch? In so-called primitive cultures, people don't have this problem. In so-called primitive cultures, art is just something you do. It is a part of your life. There's a song for washing clothing. There's a, a dance for collecting water. There are rituals for meeting people. It's just who you are. But for us, we pay somebody else to entertain us while we consign ourselves to beige hell. <laughs> but you are an artist. You are. Do any of you do this thing, you know, when you, in private, I mean, you don't tell anybody you do this, right? But where you, like, close one eye and try to line up a door frame with the other room or, or sit in front of a window and realize you're moving so that you can line that tree up outside in the window frame. Does anybody do this? I caught you. Have you ever been caught doing it? It's embarrassing, isn't it? But you see, when you do these things, you're creating a little miniature composition. It's a work of art just for you. You're an artist. We surround ourselves with the stories of our lives, with artifacts that should tell a life and death struggle of the epic story that is you. You're an artist. You think that you don't have time for this. You think you're too busy surviving. You think that it's not important. But art is a critical survival skill. Humanity is filled with the need to create. Before important things like civilization, before important things like electricity, before the mall, before your iPhone that you're wishing you could turn on in here right now, people crawled into caves armed with nothing but fire on the end of a stick. And in there, choking on the smoke in the flickering light of their flame, they took the dirt from the ground. They took the yellows and the reds and the browns and the blacks. And they mixed this dirt in their mouths with their own saliva. And using the first airbrush, they blew their stories onto the walls of these caves. Where was their audience? 
Where was their paycheck? Why did they do this? They did it because they had to. They did it because they had to. So look, as a member of the creative class, I'm making a pronouncement today. I'm allowed to do this on behalf of all, of all artists. No more tests. No more getting it. When you see a work of art, it's just for you. And by work of art, that goes for the next sunset that you witness, the next tree you sit beneath, the next time you lay in the damp grass and look up at the night sky. That's art too, God's art, just for you. Paint your living room whatever the hell color you want to. And if it's beige, then screw me and my opinions. Paint with gusto. Paint like your life depended on it. Tell your kids a story. Dance, a little private dance in front of the bathroom mirror. Lock the door first. <laughs> Take a risk. Do art and engage with art as if your life depended on it. Because in the end, it's possible that it just might. Now before we end, I want to show you something that Push created, something that we did that was based on improvisation. We just kind of made it up as we went along. We were playing with movement. We don't know what this thing means. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Thank you. <laughs>